Hello? Just need closer. Hello? Is my neck too long? Does this work? Hello? Otherwise, I can just talk louder. Um, I think we're just going to start. We're uh, running a little late here, so we're going to play some catch up. Um, Uh, the, the purpose of the talk is going to be uh, just kind of discussing add-ons, uh, problems that people might have, uh, how, to, how to research, find, uh, uh, and decide on what add-ons to choose for when you're building your site, and hopefully uh, prevent you from going into any pitfalls and wasting time and are causing problems with your sites. And uh, this will be informal. If anybody has thoughts, uh, questions, just bring them up right away. Don't wait until afterwards. Let's just like, talk about it and um, go through each topic one by one. It's going to be for every type of Plone user for the most part, because you're going to be people who are using Plone, people who are going to be uh, integrating Plone, and then developers, too. I'll go through some developer tips, too. Um, I'm Nathan Van Geem. I'm sorry I haven't even said that yet. I work for Wildcard Corp. Um, I've been doing Plone for quite a while now. I actually started at Oshkosh here, and um, um, I've, I'm responsible for quite a few add-ons in the Plone ecosystem, so I have a decent amount of ex experience with that. All right. And to get us started, um, if your site setup, or if your site setup kind of looks like this, you got tons of uh, add-on configuration and your build out eggs section looks something like this with like 60 different add-on products and you see like pickling errors when you're running to certain pages or different random errors from add-ons that are now missing that installed stuff on your site and now cause problems. You may have been doing something wrong or you're just not thinking through uh, how you're doing your add-on uh, development. And maybe it's not even you. Maybe it's just some, a coworker who's like, hey, I just, I needed this feature. And this, there's this product, you know, I just wanted to try it. So, um, yeah, that, that's a problem. So we're going to go through that. So it's uh, kind of what I talked about. It's for, it's for everybody here, most, mostly, and hopefully this will be useful. Um, so first off, where do you find add-ons? Um, most people think just uh, pullin.org, but actually there's quite a few add-ons that are on the Python package index that are not on Plone.org. That's just because some developers are lazy or um, just don't have enough time to also update both places. Um, so I actually kind of look at the Python package index more than Plone.org and search that. Um, Plone.org is fine, but Plone.org has like ratings and stuff too. Um, but the Python package index has decent search. It's OK. And um, usually find a lot there. And uh, things to look for, you can check out the download stats so you know how many people are kind of, an idea of how many people are kind of using it. It's, it might be misleading because there's, um, there's mirrors and like, it's not like a really great uh, resource for knowing exactly how many people are using it. But, at least helps you see in relation to other packages how much it's used and check out the change logs, how many releases there have been, there have been made, how active it is, um, and make sure the repository is, is uh, on GitHub. You want to be able to have access to some issues, have access to um, fork, fork it or uh, provide pull requests if there's any um, things that need you need, need to be fixed, or you just need to contact the author or whatever. Um, and if you have any, uh, any other questions, like, like most authors do not mind you just emailing them, pinging them on IRC or whatever to talk about um, have, has it been deployed on many sites? What sites do you have it deployed on? Uh, how, how have you used it to solve problems or whatever it might be? Um, those are, those are important things that you can use to evaluate. Sometimes in the description of 
add-ons, they'll actually say, hey, it's on these sites, check it out or whatever, but many times it's not. Um, so I also want to talk, to, talk about uh, how you actually inspect the repository to kind of evaluate the quality of it maybe. You know, uh, there are things like um, how many open issues there are, and just because they're open issues, sometimes they might be feature requests or whatever. Um, it's not always uh, bad if there's a lot of open issues. I think Plone Form Gen has like a boatload of issues, <laughs> but um, it's because a lot of people use it and maybe abuse it, uh, but it's still a great product. Um, how many contributors does it have? Is there more than one person that makes releases? That's a good thing. Um, and uh, recent activity, license obviously, and does it have tests? Does it do Travis CI? And, uh, Travis CI is, uh, if there, it, will, it will continuously, it's called continuous integration. It will, every single change that's made to the, to the product will automatically test and make sure that the tests aren't breaking and stuff. Um, these, are, these are all things that are useful. They're not automatically, uh, they're not things that automatically decide if a product is of low or high quality. Um, occasionally, I mean, I've in the past, put out products that I wasn't that interested in supporting a lot, but I felt someone might have a need for it. So like, I'm, I, I don't, haven't done Travis CI in all of my stuff, obviously, and maybe some of my stuff doesn't have tests, it's, in, it's not like that big of a deal. Um, at least I don't feel it's that big of a deal, because I don't have like an infinite amount of time, and I'm just putting it out there in case someone else might find it useful, and maybe they can improve it, or whatever it might be. Um, but there are things to help you evaluate them. Um, and some, more, uh, some more things you can do. Uh, if you can look at the code and, and see uh, is it, if it's using like custom content types, um, or if it's storing custom Python objects in the database, those are things that can provide problems for you when you, if you ever tried to uninstall it because you have to remove all that data from the ZODB before it really uninstalls cleanly and that provide, has problems for people. Does, does the product have an uninstall profile? And is that automatically run when you uninstall it? Like it's, what people don't realize is, is while some products have uninstall profiles, they haven't set it up so it actually is automatically run when you click the uninstall button. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, and so how you do that is uh, if you look at package, check it out in GitHub or download it or whatever, but navigate the folder structure uh, and look for the profiles folder. And if there's an uninstall folder, that means there's an uninstall profile, likely. Um, and then in that same token, look for the, an extensions folder with an install.py and look for something similar to this where it's actually running the uninstall profile when you're uninstalling the product. And when you're like about to actually evaluate and test an add-on, make sure you back up first, make a copy of your install to a staging, dev, whatever, um, just so you don't screw things up, obviously. Um, and use version control on your build outs, you know, things so you can always roll back if there's any problems really easily. And this is pretty much the just the step by step. You know, add it to your build out, run build out, restart the instance, install the add on, run the add on, like you use it a little bit and run the add on it, uninstall manually if necessary, and remove it from build out, rerun build out. Restart instance. The, re the like six, seven, eight are things people sometimes forget, because that's kind of like the most important part is to make sure like you've completely removed it from your system, and now what does your site look like after that was done? Um, some people maybe they just uninstalled it, but it's not really removed from the system, so you don't know how the necessarily the re residual effects will be. Um, And how do, this is just uh, how to manually run an uninstall profile if it's not manually un, uh, automatically run. And you go to slash manage, 
portal underscore setup, the import tab, and then this drop down. There's going to be like a list of tons of things because every single profile for every add on and everything's going to be in there. And you'll be able to find your add on's name, uninstall. It'll say like collective dot easy slider uninstall. And then you can click on that and then import all steps. And that will manually run it. No, you'll, yeah. st you'll still see it in there. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Um, so some build-up tips. Uh, pin every single version of every single package that you're using in your site. Never run build-up, at least in my opinion, never run build-up without every single thing being pinned. And if you use this setting, you can force everything to be pinned. Because otherwise, if you don't do this, you could run build-out, and doing something completely different or whatever, changing a setting or whatever, and it will pull in new packages. And you might have gotten an upgrade that you weren't prepared for, and all of a sudden you're dealing with an upgrade that um, maybe changes things or is not as compatible with your version of Plone or uh, as what the previous version was. Or um, There's any number of things that could happen, and it just prevents unpredictable things, things that are costs to your managing your sites and maintaining it and um, making sure everything still works properly. In the same token, never use build out with newest equal true without, and then prefer final equals false because then you'll get like alpha versions of everything. And I've seen this, it's not good. You just have to like evaluate the risks of installing add-ons. Evaluate, um, think about every single thing you install on your site is something that you have to maintain and that you're going to be responsible for upgrading or uninstalling even. Um, and it's also something that maybe adds a performance uh, penalty to your site. Yeah, I guess everything is going to register something with the site. It's going to register utilities in the component registry, or um, it's going to register portal actions or views. Or these are all things that potentially add maybe little by little, but it might add up to making your site slower. Um, so just consider, consider these aspects when you're evaluating and deciding upon products. And can you do it in a different way? Uh, can I think um, this is sort of a side note, but I think a lot of things that people install add-ons for can be done in the theme or done with Diazo by um, injecting markup or transforming markup or whatever it might be. I think even like I am I am the creator of the collective that easy slider and collective that point to gallery, but I think if I I would prefer to do that all in the theme now, um, probably than installing those add-ons at this point. It was nice a while ago, but most themes can have their own have their own specific slider, anyways. And trying to use these add-ons might be more work than just using the themes. Um, just things to think about and different paths to take. Um, yeah, so again, on that note, uh, if, if you're using an add-on with custom content types or whatever, it might, might, like any kind of custom object that starts with a ZODB, uninstalling it can mean that you have to do some manual work to actually uninstall it. So say you have a custom content type. Before you uninstall it, you're going to have to find every piece of content that uses that, or every piece of that custom content type instance and delete it from your site. Otherwise, it's going to blow up on you after you uninstall and remove it from your build out, and it's missing that uh, reference to that content type. And um, so, if there's like an add-on, and you don't you don't think it's quite up to snuff, or maybe it does it solves your problem, but it could do some things a little bit better. Um, Think about contributing to it. Think about 
at the very least, providing issues in the issue tracker on GitHub. Um, just communicate with the owners. And maybe the owner doesn't want to maintain it anymore. Maybe that's something that you would like to do. I don't know. You know, like, these are things that you have to think about, but there's only so many hours that every developer has and that every company has to invest in maintaining these things. Maybe a company developed an add-on for Flow 4.2 and they don't have it installed in 4.3 and um, they just don't have the time or the benevolence to, to uh, upgrade it. Um, maybe you can do that for them or maybe you can pay them to do that for, do that for you or whatever it might be. You just try to work within the community and improve existing add-ons and contribute. Um, so maintenance and upgrades. Um, if, there, if you've identified a problem with a package you have installed, first thing you do is go to Flutter.org or the Python package index or the GitHub repository for where the code is and see if someone's fixed it already. Um, I would say 75% of the time um, when I identify a problem in an add-on, someone's already fixed it and I just need to upgrade it to a newer version. Sometimes there's not a release of it. So if there's not a release of a fix that you need, contact the author and ask, hey, can you make this release? I need it. Um, and if, if it isn't broken, if your add-on isn't broken, but you see an upgrade available, well, look at the change log. What does it do? Do you actually want those changes? Um, I would say if you don't need them, don't upgrade. Don't provide a potential uh, for more maintenance costs, more um, uh, potential for risk, I guess. Um, I'm just going to go through some common problems. Because most of the time, the problems with add-ons are just kind of like leaving leftovers on your site. Um, so. They'll have something installed that references something from your add-on, and now your add-on's gone, and that code is trying to run, and it errors because oh, I'm like trying to reference this utility, this object that's not there anymore, or um, I can't, I can't do it. Um, these are things. I mean, uh, even JavaScript and CSS registrations. That's not really a big thing. It won't wreck anything, but you can go in there and manually just delete those. You can go into portal actions, and portal actions one happens sometimes, and that might actually, you know, completely wreck your site. But you can go in there and um, you can go into a slash manage and fix that um, while it's running. Still, it's not something that's too hard to fix, but it, it, like a page won't render because all these portal actions might be trying to use code that's no longer available. Um, yeah, so um, again, it's the custom content types. Um, just make sure you, you have to manually delete objects. If that doesn't work, consider leaving the add-on still in build-out, but not installed on your site, because you have to, is it worth like spending all your time trying to completely remove it? Sometimes it isn't. Consider, uh, take a look at maybe collective.diversion. It's a package that allows you to kind of change references of classes from an old class to a new one. And you can even uh, kind of strip a package of all of its features and just really uh, leave the references to objects if you really have a problem with, with residual objects stored in the database that aren't cleaned out. And then um, I'll just go through some tips for add-on developers. Um, so before you even like attempt to solve the problem <laughs> that you have, like say you have, say you want you have a need and you don't think anybody's done it or or someone has done it but it's slightly different than the way you've done it, try to consider uh, contributing to existing projects. 
There's a lot of packages out there and a lot of uh, duplicity of, of features and things that people have done in different ways. Um, do the best you can to improve existing stuff instead of providing com uh, endless competing technologies for everything. Um, search PyPy and PyPy and GitHub are the two best places to look, I would say, for if someone's already solved a problem. Uh, like I said, Plone.org won't have all of the packages. There's, there's a lot on PyPy that you might be surprised to find. Just with everything on Python package index, just do plone whatever, plone login, plone slider, plone whatever, and just search for that and you should find plenty of stuff. Chat with people in IRC and get a feel with other developers on um, how a problem should be solved and if it's worth creating another add-on for it. And always put in the collective, in my opinion. Don't um, don't use company namespaces. Um, I mean, you can use company namespaces, but don't use company uh, GitHub accounts because it just makes other people who are, might be willing to contribute it, it might make it a little bit harder for them to contribute. Not that hard, but I just think you might as well just put it in the collective. Um, try to document it the best you can. I mean, I don't always document that well either, but you know, I don't only have so much time, so just do your best you can. Sometimes there will be people who use your add-on who will be willing to document for you. Um, tra Travis CI is nice. People like seeing that. Um, it's not too hard to integrate into your project. There's lots of examples on the collective for um, integrations and free for open source projects. Try to document which, version, which versions of Plone it runs on or that you've tested it with. Um, and it's okay if you, don't, if you don't have the time to support it, in my opinion. Uh, if you solve the problem it, and you don't mind throwing it up on GitHub and you don't mind people judging you if you think the code isn't good or whatever. Um, it's, uh, someone might find it useful and improve it or whatever. Uh, I've had stuff on there that I'm not proud of, but maybe someone can find it useful. Okay, yeah, and don't release it to PyPy unless it's of decent quality, I would say. I mean, at least at least alpha quality, right, if it's on PyPy. Some people even say you shouldn't be, have alpha software on PyPy, but I, I would disagree with that. Um, try to release to both Plone.org and PyPy, and sometimes uh, keeping Plone.org up to date is sort of annoying because you got to, I'm not sure if it's still this way, but it used to be where you have to, like, You'd make the release, and then you'd also have to go log into Plone.org and like set a couple things. Yeah, yeah, I know it automatically. Up, you, you like if you use like Zest that releaser, there's or Jarn that or Yarn that make release. That's that automatically uploads it for you. But I, at least the, at least before with Plone.org, you'd still have to log in and and say that like this release should be shown on the page or something like that. I don't know if it still is, so sometimes it's kind of uh, a little bit more legwork, but it's helpful for people. And give the collective account on the Python package, uh, Python package index access to make releases, because that means uh, people in the community, if you're not able to make a release to the Python package index, can do it for you. Um, just might save you time and help someone who needs a release of your package. And some other general tips. Try not to store um, custom Python objects in the ZODB. Use primitives if you can. And most things can be done with dictionaries and other primitives. You don't need to have a custom class that you store into the ZODB because that just means you got to deal with uninstalling, and if people don't uninstall it right, 
they, you're just going to call it causing them pain, and people are going to, if anybody's ever used pulling for artist stuff, that's sort of what's going on there. Um, people had a horrible time trying to uninstall that stuff. Um, write an uninstall profile. And make sure the add-on plays nice with all the sites on a, uh, an instance. So even if the site doesn't have it activated, that it will still um, uh, work nice. Because like, if you don't register things as browser layers and stuff, they'll be available on sites that they're not technically installed on. So just make sure you think about those things. Do not use local persistent utilities. That's the same thing with custom content types, more or less. Um, try not to monkey patch, although sometimes you have to. Um, just be careful about how you implement things to not make things painful for people. Don't move viewlets around and things like that. Think of people who might be installing it, maybe. Um, make, think uh, about security when you're you're developing your add-on. Uh, CSRF is uh, one of the most commonly exploited um, security problems. And make sure to use clone.protect code for, for uh, if you're going to change something on a website or write to the DODB. And that's it. Any questions, guys? Any uh, add-on developers that have any further tips to share? Bronco? Uh, I have one uh, like, opinion on like, sure. the I'm not sure if I agree with uh, like what you said before about uh, trying to not have queries if the yeah, query is kind of useful for you or sometimes it's broken. Uh, sometimes keeping up to date stuff is easier You shouldn't ever have to go through all of them. They should, an add-on, that's maybe something I should have kept in there. An add-on should keep upgrades from all the versions and should run you through them all. But yeah, um, point well taken. I, I, can, I can see that too. Anything else, guys? All right. Well, I think we've caught up on...